When the Gustavus men's basketball team needed a bucket in the mid-1990s, Scott Lawinger was the player with the ball in his hands. Well, the first time I saw Scott was in the summer before his senior year at a, a recruiting camp. And I just liked uh, kind of the way he moved, his comfort level on the, on the court. And in the, in the short time I met him, he was the kind of person that I thought would be good at Gustavus. Left-handed with long arms and an unorthodox style, Lawinger was a unique scorer who was smart and crafty around the basket. Well, he had a remarkable touch uh, really anywhere that he shot, and he understood his game pretty well, and most of his shots were probably within eight feet. Scott had a great sense of space and awareness of, of the court, and uh, that, that ability to, to use his body well, to create space, uh, he played very laterally, uh, and so he went a long way with a step or two. Uh, and that made him really difficult to guard, uh, along with being left-handed. He holds the school record for career field goal percentage at 62.8% and ranks sixth in field goals made with 602. He graduated as the seventh leading scorer in Gustavus history with a total of 1,490 points and was the program's leader in block shots with 98. He rebounded well, he defended well, he was a good help defender. Uh, he was a complete player. He was the core of our scoring. He was that person who, um, who got the important basket when we needed it, who was able to um, create great opportunities from what other players did, and they got opportunities from uh, teams having to concentrate on him. In his standout senior season, Lawinger was named the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Most Valuable Player, just the third Gusty to ever receive the honor, and was named the National Association of Basketball Coaches All-Region First Team. He scored 561 points in 19.3 average, shot 61.4% from the field, and grabbed a team-high 194 rebounds in helping the Gusties claim the MIAC championship and qualify for the NCAA tournament, where they advanced to the Sweet 16 before falling to Wittenberg University 76-68 in Springfield, Ohio. He played with a passion, um, but he also played with I think a sense of care of the game and his teammates um, that was, I thought, very impressive. When he was being recruited and there was that question of uh, where, do you, where do you see me fitting in, it was asked by his father. And it's always scary to get that because you wonder if they're asking for promises. And, and I said, we're going to play our best players and if you're our best player, when you come here, we're going to play you. And if you're not, then somebody else is going to play ahead of you. And he walked out of the office and I thought, oh no, he's not coming. Uh, years later, he said that's exactly what he wanted to hear. He wanted to have to earn whatever he got, and, and he earned an awful lot. After graduating in 1996 with an education major, Lawinger took a social studies teaching position at Roseville Area Middle School, where he is currently in his 17th year. He went on to earn his master's degree in education from St. Mary's University. In addition, Lawinger has been heavily involved in coaching. He is currently the assistant girls basketball coach at Roseville Area High School and has served as the girls varsity basketball coach and boys assistant basketball coach at Roseville Area as well. Scott lives in Blaine with his wife Jamie Embretson, a 97 grad, and their daughters Caroline, Amelia, and Natalie. One of the special things about a coach-player relationship is how it lasts and it's a, a special bond that we develop in that four years and, and Scott's one that I think uh, has developed that bond to where whenever I see him or whenever I do talk to him, we don't have to catch up. It's neat to have those guys grow up to where they become friends, not just former players.